Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a quick look at Lightroom Mobile. Now in subsequent videos we'll take a more in-depth look at all of Lightroom Mobile's features, but first I wanted to make sure that we understood the basic concepts and the workflow. We need to know that there's two different versions of Lightroom Mobile. We have a free version and the paid version. In the free version you can use all of the capture and organizational features as well as most of the editing features and sharing features. However, the paid version, which is included in your subscription to Creative Cloud for Photography or Creative Cloud Complete, that unlocks even more power. So for example, with the paid version, you have the ability to sync your photos across all of your mobile devices, as well as synchronize with apps such as Photoshop Fix or Photoshop Mix or Adobe Spark. And you can also sync with Lightroom on the desktop. With the paid version, you have access to more tools, including the radial and graduated filters for creating selective adjustments in your photos, and you have the ability to edit raw files copied from your camera to your mobile device. You have the ability to share collections of images as well as view any activity on those collections, such as likes and comments, in both the desktop as well as the mobile app. And of course you get additional tools including the desktop apps such as Lightroom and Photoshop as well as web services such as Adobe Portfolio to create a customized website to showcase your photos. Okay, once you've downloaded Lightroom Mobile from the App Store for iOS, for the free version you would just click the Get Started button. But if you have a subscription, you'll want to click to sign in so that you can access all of these additional Lightroom Mobile features. Right now we're looking at the All Photos screen and the first thing that you'll want to do is import some photographs. Now I've already imported 175 and you'll notice that the first time that you import photos, first of all, Lightroom will ask permission to access the camera as well as access your location. So you'll need to give it permission to access the camera and you'll need to decide whether or not you want to give it access to your location to allow the photos to automatically be geotagged by Lightroom as you bring them in. All right, to get a photo from our camera roll, we'll tap the camera roll icon at the bottom of the screen and then navigate to the image that we want to bring in. Now, if I just want to bring in a single image, I can tap that image. Lightroom will take me directly to the editing view where I could make edits to this image before I bring it in but I'm going to tap on the caret icon in the upper left because I actually want to bring in more than one image. So instead of tapping an image, I'm going to swipe through multiple images in order to add them all at once. Then I'll tap add five photos and we can see that those five photos have been added to the all photos view. If I want to see them in grid view, I can tap all photos. For now, let's return back to the All Photos view because I also want to show how to take a photo using the Lightroom camera app. I'll tap the camera icon in the lower right and then take a photograph of this rock. When I'm finished making my photographs, I'll tap the X in the upper left hand corner and we can see that that image has also been added to the All Photos. I'll tap the All Photos view and if I want to see an image larger, I can tap it to go to full screen. I can then move from one image to the next simply by swiping through them. If I want to zoom in on an image, I can do so by double tapping. If I want to zoom out, I can double tap again. Or I can use the pinch gestures in order to zoom into a specific location. And then again, either use the pinch gestures or just double tap to zoom back out. In this case, I want to make some edits to this image. And you can see when I went into single image view, at the top it says edit and I have access to the editing tools along the bottom. If I tap edit, I just want to point out that this is also where you can see additional information about your images, you could rate and review your images, and you could see any activity once you've published it as a collection. For now, I'll return back to edit. And the first thing I want to do is crop the image. I'll tap crop and then select an aspect ratio. I can modify the crop, I can reposition the crop, and once I've adjusted it the way I want, I'll tap the check in order to apply it. But of course, everything that you do in Lightroom is non-destructive. So if I scroll to the right here, you can see that I have a reset button. If I tap that, 
I can choose to reset the adjustments I make or different states in time to import or to open. For now, I'll just tap away. I also want to point out that we have multiple undo, so at the top, we can tap on the undo to undo the crop. I'll tap again in order to redo the crop. Lightroom also has a number of presets that I can use. I'll tap on the preset icon. I can use creative presets or color presets, black and white presets, even add detail effect or camera presets. I'm gonna stay with color for a moment, scroll down all the way to the bottom and then tap dynamic. That's a good starting point, so I'll tap the check. And then I can refine that using any of the other edit stacks. I'm gonna move directly over to effects and increase the dehaze amount, and also increase clarity just a bit. I might want to darken the edges, so I'll drag the vignette amount to the left, although I think the entire image is a bit too dark, so I'll back off a bit on dehaze. I can tap and hold on the before and after icon to see before and after. If I wanna hide the interface, I can either swipe down in order to hide just this edit stack, or I can tap in order to hide all of the interface. While the interface is hidden, I can tap and hold on the image to show a before and then after, and then I'll just tap again in order to bring back the interface. When I'm ready to share the image, I can tap on the share icon. I can use the share button to simply share it with maybe Facebook or Twitter. I can save to my camera roll. I can use edit in to edit in either Photoshop fix or mix, or I could use open in, choose an image size, and then select an application to continue editing the image and then share it that way. For now, I'll tap cancel, return back to grid view, and return back to all photos view. So there you go, a quick overview of the Lightroom mobile workflow. In subsequent videos, I'll be covering all of Lightroom's features in depth, including Lightroom's capture experience, the viewing options, how to use collections to organize and share images, We'll learn how to add ratings and metadata like titles and captions. We'll learn to sync our photographs with Lightroom on the desktop. And I'll share other technical insights, shortcuts, and techniques for getting the most out of Lightroom Mobile. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.